Hi everybody, it's Miss Betty on Farm Ridge, and today I am doing turnip and mustard greens. I've done them before, but I kind of wanted to do them from the beginning so that you could see exactly, once again, how to do them for all of our newcomers. So I've already done most of them, but I did save two bunches out of my six so that you can watch me do them. We want to strip these greens off of the stem. We want them to look like this when they're done and we don't want any strings on them. So this is what I consider a nice bunch of greens and they only cost 99 cents a bunch. So when they do that, I always get five or six because I want my pot to be full of greens. So what you gotta do is, you wanna take your green, it looks like this, with the stem, with the stem right down the middle. But what you wanna do is you wanna fold it over because this is easy. Grab it in the middle and pull. Now, you see that string? If there's a string on your greens, take it off. You do not want your dream greens to be stringy. So you wanna make sure that you get all of that off. These are some really nice, beautiful greens, especially, you know, seeing as though it is winter time still. And we're not growing greens in the Midwest, but wherever they're growing them at, they sure are pretty. Always get that string off. I remember hearing my mother say, those greens were stringy. She said, did you get all those strings off? And I was like, what strings? Well, there's always a little string there. So make sure that you get that off because that is going to aid your greens being tasty. It's kind of late in the day to start a pot of greens, but I wanted greens. So I jumped in my car and I ran down to the supermarket and I bought me some greens because I like to cook and cooking is nothing but a thing on Farm Ridge. You just have to do it. And I know there's a lot of my young cooks out there that this is a tedious job. They'd rather not do it. Look at that string. Get that string off of there. They'd rather not do it, but they like them. But one of the reasons that I continue to do soul food is because we do not want our soul food to die. The history of our soul food is rich, and we grew up on this food. Nobody died from eating soul food. Yet, we buy all this fast food, and they say your cholesterol is high. That's not good for your heart. But we grew up on this food, and we survived. Because our parents knew just what to feed us to keep us healthy, and we always had the Lord on our side. So... I have six bunches of turnip greens. I have one bunch of mustard. Your mustard greens are always the curly greens. If you don't want your um, greens to taste like mustard, then you put less mustard and more turnips. But there are a lot of people that prefer to have just mustard greens. And they you can mix them with mustard greens. You can mix them with kale. I usually just do mustard and turnips. I even hear some people say they mix them with collard. Collard is not a good mix for turnips and mustard greens because the collard green is sometimes a lot tougher and it takes them longer to cook. So you don't want to spend that time, you know, doing your collard greens and your greens are going to be tough. Mustard greens are real easy to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish these greens. After I finish these greens, then I need to wash them from this sink to this sink to this sink. And I need to do that three times. That way my greens are not dirty and they are not gritty. And they are good to eat. So I'm going to finish this. And then I'm going to come back and show you exactly how I'm going to season my pot to get my pot ready with my ham shanks. These are not sauteed greens. They are greens that I am going to cook with some old-fashioned ham hock shanks and they are going to be good i'll be back all right i'm back and i have stripped my greens they are ready to be washed never ever wash your greens 
and warm water. The water has to always be cold or that will cause your greens to be tough. So yes, the water is cold, but you need to wash your greens and you're gonna wash them just like you're washing clothes, up and down, up and down. And you can hear that I have my sink running because I'm filling my next sink. Always nice to have a double sink. If you don't have a double sink, then use a dish pan and a sink. Okay, but once you get those greens white, up and down, up and down, then you transfer them to the next sink because that's going to be my second wash. Okay? And I'm gonna admit, it's cold. And sometimes I work low. But today, I'm just going right in here without gloves. Because I actually want you to see what it looks like and feel like. It's awesome. On this side, my water is still cloudy. And that is why you want to wash your greens three to four times because the last time that I washed my greens, I want my water to be extremely clear. Now, I'm not sure if you can see the water that I have in this sink, but it still looks a little green and a little murky. You don't want that. When you're done, you want those greens to be coming out of clear, clean water. So now I'm letting that one out and I'm starting my second wash. And hopefully today, I only have to do this like, like maybe four times because it's cold. And that's all you do. Once I get these greens done, all washed, I'm gonna show you my pot, but my meat is already cooking. And once my greens are done, or always almost done midway, then I bought a turnip. This is a turnip. You take it and you peel it and you slice it. And some people like turnips in their mustard and collard greens. Some people don't like them, so it's completely optional. I do like it, but I don't do it all the time. But today, I kind of had a taste for turnip greens. So I can see the dirt in this sink from where I wash the greens. Because remember, greens come out the ground, so obviously they are dirty. So, and what I do is I usually go back through my greens again and I check to see if there's any more strings. And sure enough, this one has a string. You're not gonna get them all, but you gotta get the majority of them. This is going to be my third wash. I'll be back and I'll show you my pot in just one moment with my meat cooking. I have my meat cooking in my four and a half quart pot. And this is my cast iron um, pot. I love this pot and I use it for multiple uses. But in it, I do have my ham hock cooking with some onion and a little seasoning salt. And once I allow that to cook for a while, then I will come back and I will start to add my greens and I will show you how to season them. I'll be back. Okay, it is time to add my greens. My meat has cooked down nicely, smelling all good. And these are the greens. This is six bunches of greens, you guys. So once you strip them and wash them, they go down. And they're going to go down even more once I put them in this pot. So we're going to start adding our greens a little bit at a time. And I generally like to um, just push them down as I go. Push them down. And believe it or not, they are all going to fit in this pot because six bunches will give me a nice pot full. Once we get them all in and they began to shrink, then I will show you how I am going to season them using salt, pepper, some seasoning salt, and I have some green seasoning that I buy. Ironically, I buy it at the dollar store. And I'll show you that in a minute because I normally like to season my greens before I get them all in. So I like to kind of season them midway is what I call it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some seasoning salt. And I'm using the big side because I know how to control it. All right. 
Then we're gonna use some black pepper and we're just gonna sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. You know, that's my motto. I'm also gonna use some kosher salt. And I'm gonna use a large side and we're just gonna put a little bit in here. We don't want them to be salty. And this is my green seasoning that I was telling you about. Green seasoning. I buy this at the dollar store. And I can also buy it at my favorite store, Whitman's here in Rockford. So we take some of this. I add this when I cook spinach also because it's a good seasoning. I'm also going to add a fourth of a cup of canola oil. Once I get my greens all the way down. So I'll turn my heat down up some because we want them to be at a full boil when we season them. If you notice, you see how they're going down. And we'll just keep adding more. They smell, smell so good. I love turnip greens. My mom cooks turnip greens every week. And I think by me watching her, I began to pick up that habit. And so that now that she's passed and gone, it's kind of like I call this the time that I spend with my mom. So memories never die, you guys. They're always there. Find something that keeps your memories alive. Mine is cooking turnip greens. My mother, she cooked all the time, so I guess I got that from her. All right. So we keep on pushing them down. And if you notice, I'm packing them in because they are going to cook down. Once they cook down, then I will flip them over. By them having time to sit, all the excess water have drained off of them. Okay. So I'm just going to let you watch me for a minute. So, you know, just come on. Come into my secret closet and watch me work. All right. That's it. That is six bunches of turnip and mustard greens. And they are so pretty. Step away for a minute. I use canola oil in my greens. All right, so we gotta continue to push them down because now they have to get in that pot and they have to cook. Once they do that, I'll come back and I'll show you one fourth cup of canola oil. Just pour it in. Replace my lid on my greens and I am just going to let them cook. And I will come back and show you what they look like. I hope we're having fun. I'm having fun. How about you? Cooking is so rewarding, and I simply love to do it. I'll be back, and I'll show you my greens. Now, what you start with is not what you end up with because they cook down. I'll be back. My greens are cooking down, and I almost forgot. You know, I always add my um, pepper sauce. I make this. I go to the store, I buy hot peppers, jalapenos, the little red peppers. Sometimes my friends give them to me at, in the summertime. But I take this and I add vinegar and water and I put my peppers in it. And then I add a little pepper sauce 
I like to put the juice in my greens. I also like to add a little part of pepper. So I'll just get one of the peppers out. It's a little red one. But you don't want to put all that because that'll make your greens too hot. So I simply just sliced off a piece. I also have my turnips washed and ready to go. But you do not want to put your turnips in until your greens are almost done. Because you don't want them to turn to mashed potatoes. Because that's what will happen if you put them in too soon. All right. I don't know. Can you see this? But the greens are cooking very well. At this point is when I start to try and flip them over. Hold on to your pot. And let the greens from the bottom come to the top. And the ones from the top go to the bottom. If I was having company for dinner, I would have probably cooked 12 bunches of greens. Because as you can see, 6 bunches is not a lot. And my husband and myself, we can actually eat these in a couple of meals. And then there'll be a little bit left that we'll put in the freezer and we'll eat at a later date. But that looks so good. So good. See if you can get closer to it. But don't they look good? All right. We'll let them cook. I'll come back and I'll show you when I put my turnips in. And these turnips and mustard greens will be done. Okay, I have brought my greens to a full boil. I have took all the meat off of my ham bone because you don't want the bones in there. You just want all this wonderful meat. And now I'm going to add my turnips. Of course, you only want to add your turnips in the last 30 minutes of the process of your greens because you don't want them to overcook. You want them to be nice and soft and not firm. But we also do not want them to be mushy, so we're just going to let them come to a boil, finish cooking, and these greens are going to be done. It's not hard at all. You can do this, I assure you. I'm boiling some water, and I am going to make some hot water cornbread, and tonight on Farm Ridge, we are going to have turnip mustard greens and hot water cornbread, and it is going to go down. I wish you were here. Okay, I wanted you to get a really, really, really close look at how the greens look when they are starting to cook. And that's, you see in the oil, from my canola oil. That's the meat from my ham hock. Cooking in the back, you see my turnips. And these turnip greens are going to be so awesome. So awesome. Take a look at that. It may seem like a lot of work, but the reward is so rewarding. So hang on in there. The end is coming. And I have been cooking on Fawn Ridge.